Okay, hi, this is W1REX from QRPME, and I've got a, um, this is the packet of parts for the Billathon kit, which is a frequency grinding Billathon, and we're going to have a crystal oscillator and frequency counter for modifying crystals. So I'm going to unpack this thing, and we're going to try doing a build right here. Um, Take it apart. We got a circuit board. Nice big area for, for instance, when this is done, all you got to do is touch those two areas with a, with a crystal, and be able to uh, oscillate it and read the frequency. Or you can take a, a quartz blank, very similar to that, and put a weight on top of it that's connected to this other pad and measure the frequency of a blank. So we're going to build this kit shortly but the first thing we're going to do is take, first thing you should do with all kits is take and sort out the parts and make sure you got them all. I have a little technique, um, this is a, might be a little anal or, or whatnot but um, a lot of times I see people when they're building kits they sort the parts over and over and over and over again. So what I do is I like to sort the parts only once. So I'm going to take this bag of parts and very quickly separate out the things that are easily recognizable. I mean anybody should be able to recognize what they, you might not know what they are but you can pretty much pick out the connectors, crystal, Potentiometers, trimmer pots here, There's another crystal, um, and so then you're left with these parts that you're going to have to do a little bit more uh, inspection to be able to figure out what they are. In this case, oh well, here's a green LED. What I've done is I printed out the, the parts list, and this is on a clipboard, and underneath the clipboard is a piece of black static foam, and then a little bit of piece of foam underneath that, so this thing is about half an inch thick so I can just take and and poke a hole in the paper where the green LED goes and I can proceed to sort all these parts out and put them right next to where they're supposed to be and again the idea is we're only going to sort these parts once and before we build so there's a 500 ohm potentiometer goes right there this is a 20k because it's the only other one in the thing here's a 10 microfarad capacitor uh, so we're thinning out, with, again, what you do is you try to find the parts that are really e easily recognizable and get them out of the pile. Here's a 4 to 20. This is actually a little bit bigger than 20 picofarad, but that's okay. Um, and here's some transistors. Um, I've been wearing glasses for over 50 years, so my eyes are pretty much crap. So I happen to have quite a few optical enhancement devices laying around my bench when I'm building stuff and um, this is a really nice lighted LED magnifier I got from Harbor Freight for about five bucks I'm not an employee or a stockholder in Harbor Freight but I like I like to buy cheap tools especially when they do the job so in this case this is a 4403 so I'll very quickly Take it off the thing and put it where the 4403 is supposed to go. Um, this one's a 2222. And this one is a, I can read that one, another 2222. And you gotta make sure when you uh, poke down through the paper that, you, that you're straight up so you don't bend the leads. But um, there's a. 78L05 and this one must be a MPF 102. I'm going to put that on the top. Um, this is a 20 megahertz crystal. I mean a 4 megahertz crystal so we'll put it right there. So we can quickly now get these resistors out of the way. Um, by process of elimination, oh, there's a 1K. Those are easy to recognize. Uh, there's another 1K. 
There's a one meg right here. There's another one meg. Let's see, I bent that one because I wasn't straight up in the air. Uh, that's a 447K. Uh, here's a brown, black, yellow. Here's a 1K. This is a 820K. There's another 1K. So now we're down to, oh my goodness, we got three, three left. There's a 100 ohms. That's a 1K, so that's the third 1K. And this one is process of elimination and it starts with a uh, orange that's the 300 ohm here's a couple of 4 1 in 40 1 48 so we'll just lay those down right there because they're pretty obvious what they are capacitors are next now oh, these are the ones that are the toughest because they got such tiny lettering I'm gonna use another one here's another little pocket uh, magnifier that's really nice Again, I think this is a Harbor Freight for two dollars and ninety-nine cents. There's a six hundred and eighty. Uh, remember the letters on one side and the temperature coefficient is on the other. So if it, if you first don't get the side that makes any sense, flip it over. One hundred two. So that's another one thousand picofarad. Four seventy-three. So that's an O forty-seven. Twenty-two. Four seventy-one, which is a four hundred and seventy. Uh, that's a forty-seven. Must be another forty-seven around here somewhere. It's a 150. I'll cut that off the carrier. Oh, there's there's two more 47s. I must have I must have slipped up and forgot I put a 47 in there and then I put a, a double in there. So we'll set that aside and this is a 1.5. And on the carry, we got some point ones. Here's some. Uh, here's the battery snap down here. Here's a LCD display. We got. Um, here's the microprocessor. Here's the IC socket. So there's a micro LCD display. Here's a HC132 RCA down here. Uh, stereo socket, or stereo jack. It's listed here somewhere, isn't it? I think I got that. I think I kitted one of them by mistake. So, we'll put this crystal up here, even though that's not used there. So here we go. We got all the parts. I'm going to set it aside. And now when I need a part, I just go over to the clipboard and pull it off. And we only had to sort them once. So here we go. We got a board. Now, because I happen to have a whole bunch of these laying around, I'm going to build them using the little uh, brass set. So I'm going to just put these little guys on the board. I'm going to find four spots in which they don't get in the way for now. A lot of times when you're building a board, you, you, a lot of builders have uh, different techniques for how they, how they go about it. They either build it um, with the tall components last, short components first, they build it by section, and a lot of QRP stuff, it's relatively simple. So you don't really, like in this case, I'm not going to test it section by section, I'm just going to build it. So um, 
what I'm, I will probably start. I don't have to go by low to height because with these things, when I put a part in, uh, for instance, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just, uh, let's see, I'll pick a part. Um, I don't know which one to pick first. Uh, if I was going to put this RCA on, um, that would go there. I got to cut the little feet off first. So I'd put that on there, and then when I when I flip it over, if I didn't have these little uh, brass sets, this thing would be all kind of wobbly when I go to solder. But in this case, now I, it was a bad pick here, and the and the fact that that thing does not want to. Uh, uh, stay put because of the way the things unless you maybe do a little bit of bending or you put your finger underneath it when you heat it up so I won't I won't start there in this case I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, I'll I'll pick this oscillator section first so I'll start with um, resistors uh, in this case I got a 47 K so I'll pull that off my list I have a lead bender here the resistors are all set at 0.4, so I put it on 0.4. Bend the lead. Put it in. Bend the leads out a little bit like that. Now I can, I can pick the next one I got is a 1K. I got another. There's uh, a 1K. I got three more 1Ks, so I'll pick the three 1Ks here. I'll bend them all at 0.4. I'm gonna do a batch mode. I'm gonna do um, a bunch of resistors first before I do any soldering. So I'll put in three or four or five parts. You notice that the the board is standing up off of, off these low parts. It wouldn't be a problem. Here's a 1K. And these guys are spread out enough that uh, I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to be overly critical and try to make sure the colors all go the same way like some people. But, um, but I like to make sure it's nice and neat. So there are uh, four resistors. I'll get my iron. I use a uh, brass shavings to clean the tip of the iron. Nice and clean. Uh, get some fresh solder. And the idea about these these brass sets here is the fact that I can just move this board around any way I want to get it at just the right point where I'm soldering. I have my hand or my palm, the bottom of my palm, right sitting on the board uh, on the bench, and I can feed it just the way I want it. And I can very very easily move it anywhere I want to make sure I got clear spot for getting both the iron and the solder in where I want it. Now I'm, I'm working rather quickly and because I'm uh, feeding it pretty fresh solder I can I can get all four leads done without having to re-clean the tip. So now I'll just finger on the top of the part so it doesn't go flying and cut them all off. Set them aside and there are the first first four resistors. So I'll go after them more. I'll go after uh, I'm gonna I'm just going to look for where the resistors go and then find, call out the right one. So we need a, I'm going to start over here. There's 100K. So here's 100K right here. 0.4 spacing. So that guy will go in here. Uh, what's next? Uh, 100 and 300. So I'll do 100. was right here so I got my finger on the bottom side of the board holding that thing right that resistor right to the board and then I bend it apart a little bit so it stays put and I got the 300 
and that goes right here okay I got a couple of one megs over there so I'll find a, I'll find a one meg I know it's 0.4 so I'll go ahead and bend it to the right spacing there's let's see one meg's got to be right around here somewhere there's a one meg right there Get another one. Okay, where'd this one go? Right there. Hiding behind the thumb screw. And I'm down to one resistor left. 820K. And that one goes right here. Okay, ready for another batch of soldering. Again, I'll clean the tip of my iron and I'll work a little dollop on the end of the iron to have that little solder puddle at the end and that helps the heat transfer you don't feed, you don't need to feed very much solder you just need a little bit uh, most of the time when I look at uh, kits that someone has built has got some problems um, I find way too much solder on the boards now I'm also rotating I got a flat spot on the end of the thing so I'm rotating my iron a little bit to get the flat just in the right spot so it's it's touching the pad and touching the the lead that's coming out of the pad. And you put that solder right at the bridging point, so you so it flows on both at the same time, and it goes pretty quickly. You can see how I can keep rotating the board to get it just the right spot. I'm going to go on the back side here. And I got one more in here. And one more right in there. I'll take a visual inspection. One, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody's done. Iron back and. Should be using flush cutters, which have got a nice flat surface on one and a very sharp um, bevel to it, so you can get right down on the board. And there's not much, not much coming off the board. Let's see if I can get that close to the camera. You can see there's uh, some people when they're using regular dikes, you'll see eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch sticking up off the board of the leaves. That's not good practice. Okay, so all the resistors are gone. I could probably go in there and do, here's the 500 ohm trim pot. I'll put the trimmer on the outside edge, lay that in there. And because I don't have to worry about uh, the board being um, wobbly and soldering, I can just put the parts in ex any way I want. Um, There's one, and I'll go for the second pot. I'll say that this is up by the, well, see, I can just move this leg. I can just move it over here a little bit and put the pot in. we got a little bent lead on it. I'll put the pot in, and it's hanging off the board somewhat. I'm going to leave it. I know that later on I might want to put this in something where the, there's a little lip that comes on the, on the board. So I'll, I'll leave it up in the air a little bit, and uh, that way I get a little bit of clearance on the, on the edge of the board. And I'll solder this guy in. Okay. 
Okay. Clip those leads off. So we got that. I'll go do some. Uh, I'll do all the capacitors next. So what do we got here? Here's the 22. I think that's down here in the signal conditioning area. Let's see where's the 22? I guess I should just do them in the way I see them because I don't want to do the part and find it. I want to just find something to solder and then put find the part for it. So I'll go the other way around. So I'll go and here's the tantalum. I'm following the signal path through the thing and putting the parts down. So here's the 1.5. This one is a little bit, see how it's got a, uh, the spacing on this thing. Uh, it's got a 0.2 and the, the, on the board is smaller. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take my uh, flat needle nose pliers and I'm just going to take that kink out of it. And then when I put it down there, it'll fit the board a lot better. Fit that spot, I'll sink right down there, spread it apart. Okay, we got a 47. So I'll go do the 47. Next one is a uh, 047. In this case, it's 0.1 spacing, so I'll just drop it right in. Now, I don't want to do all the capacitors. I'm just going to do, you know, three or four. So let's pick another one, uh, 0.1 with 2.2 spacing. So i got to cut that one off the carrier. Here's a point one that goes over here. Seat it down, spread it apart. That's enough for now, so I'll set it down. Again, clean the tip of my iron, get my solder, and my solder's a little my Leads a little short, it's starting to get in the way holding it, so I'll Did I get them all? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. get some more capacitors. Um, so we'll go, oh, there's a 470. So I'll go 470, put it there. Uh, more capacitors, more capacitors. Oh, here's an error. This is, uh, it says 1000. That's a 47. Oh, that's why it is. I got a and you can see it's got a 0.2 spacing on it. So I'm using the, let's double check that. Oops, wrong one, I'll put it back. It's the one down here. Nope, it's, Looks like I'm gonna have to make a little fix because that's a 47, but that's got a point. That's got a point one spacing, but on the board here it's got a point two. So I'm just gonna have to spread the legs apart, seat it down a little bit. I'm gonna try to even it. It's gonna be a little bit high, and 
and I'm bending it on the bottom with my thumb. I'll put that guy in because it's kind of wiggly. So I'll just do that one now. I'll do the other one. Another thing you should note that if you've got solder that you've had in your toolbox and it's been all over the place, um, it has a tendency to, to attract dirt. And if you've got dirty solder, you're going to end up with dirty solder joints. So you should make sure that you keep your roll of solder fairly pristine and away from grime and grit and everything else. Okay, um, let's pick some more capacitors. Let's look up here in the oscillator section. We've got a 680, so we've got a 680 right here. Put that in. Uh, what's next? We got a 150. So we got a 150 here. Uh, we got a thousand. Here's a thousand. got another thousand over there so another thousand now do you see the do you see the benefits of sorting those parts and, and actually putting them someplace where you know exactly where they are so that you, know, you just look at something on the board and you know exactly where to go get the part you never sort the thing twice here's a point one up here in this corner so I got a point one we'll put it up there uh oh somebody's skyping me right in the middle of my build Oh my goodness, it's going to show up on my darn video. And I know who it is. And I'm going to have to just ignore it for a minute. So let me solder these guys. Oops, that one didn't catch. that I'm going to add a little bit more solder to that one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, those are all soldered. So we'll cut them off. Oh, that one didn't get down close to the board. Okay, get them all out of the way. Looking pretty good. Uh, we got a couple more capacitors remaining, so we got another. I'm gonna move this guy around here because I see I got a point one sitting there, so I'm gonna put that guy in. So I just made a little bit of clearance for him. I got a 22 here. That goes there. Uh, I got a 10 microfarad, which is this, uh, whoops, where's that guy going? He's going right in there, so I make plus minus, so I got to make sure I get the orientation right. There's the plus, and there's the minus. Set that in. And I got one capacitor, two capacitors left. One of them is a 10 picofarad. Uh, I just check that Skype call, see in the heck who it was. Yeah, that was my buddy Carl. Probably wanting me to. Well, he checks in a lot. So here we got some tens. I'm gonna double check this one. Yep, 10, okay. So this is uh, 
A little spot of blue on this board would be nice. And the one last remaining is the trimmer cap. So let's see if that thing fits in there. This one's a little... Got to bend the, bend the spacing a little bit to make sure it fits in. I'm pushing it straight in. I'm making sure the leads go straight in so it doesn't bend over. A little tight. Clean my clean my uh, iron again and tackle these guys. Now this video is real time. I am not I don't have any editing equipment, nothing fancy. I'm just uh, shooting with a Sony Handycam suspended over my bench. So no, um, no special effects. I'd like to do some fun things with some video but I don't have time right now. Oh, I forgot the the uh, trimmer cap. Okay. So I'll cut those guys off. one that's a little high right there. Okay, got all the resistors, all the capacitors. I suppose, uh, I don't know, pick one. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll do some, uh, I sort of, I sort of in the back of my head, I'm doing all the stuff that's kind of low to the board and as I run out of things that are low to the board, I start building up. Uh, that no no real rhyme or reason to that. It's just the way I've been doing it all these years. Well, I guess I'll do the uh, I'll do the 4148 diodes. Um, Got to cut those off the carriers. Looks to me like uh, those are 0.3 spacing, and I don't, I don't have a 0.3. Well, actually, that might be 0.3 up there. Let's let's try it. Go right to the very tip of my my lead bending tool, and let's see. This one goes this way. Yeah, that works pretty good. Again, diodes have got orientation to them. So just make sure you check the where the bar is before you uh, seat the part down because after you get it down there you won't be able to see where the bar is on the diode probably should put an external mark on there so that even with the diode seated you can tell which end is which this is the nice thing uh, on some of the boards I've done for build-a-thons rather than say R2, R3, R4, R5 I actually put the value on the board because you notice all I've done is I've looked at the the parts list and the board. I have not gone through a manual to tell me how to build this thing. I'm building it, well of course I designed it so I know how to build it, but but really you can just look at the values that are on the board with a little with a couple of exceptions because this 1000 picofarad is a mislabel on the on the silk screen. That was my mistake. I didn't catch it. Uh, I got two one in 48s up here. Checking the Checking the orientation, got it right, seat it down, and one last 4148 going the other way. Okay, that looks like a few leads to bend or solder. So I'll just put it down, clean my iron with the, I'll get another loop of solder out because it's getting kind of short.
Okay, now I got I got six inches of solder sticking out there now, and I'll tackle the board. Now in this case, I was a little tippy because I took one of the legs off and moved around, didn't put it back on. So I'm holding it down with this finger over here so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't wiggle on me. I have a tripod base instead of a quad base. Uh, one, two. Whoops! Missed that guy right there. Okay, everybody soldered. As I'm cutting them off, I look at the solder joints just to make sure that that lead is indeed soldered. And here's my, I'll put my fourth one back on. So now I'm back to the, back to a stable base. Okay, so um, I guess well, I'll put some, uh, put some transistors and LEDs. Here's a green LED, which is uh, for the active side. I'm going to take a look at the orientation of the LED and I can see where the flat side is. Flat side, it's got the short lead, flat side on the board. Now, some people would take that and put it right down on the board and I don't like that because when you solder, uh, you're soldering very close to that LED so I like to sort of bring it up just a tad just to give it some more elevation bend it from the other side and when it's now hanging down there uh, I've got like an eighth of an inch uh, off the board it just gives me a little extra protection from the heat of soldering down into the LED and you can just sort of jockey it into position when you're done I'll do the other one uh, again I'm looking at the flat on the board short lead goes like that I'll try to bring it up about the same height hold it bend the leads on the back side so now when it suspends it should be about the same height so out of these two guys oops gotta clean that it's got a little dirt on it Put a little puddle back on it And there's the two LEDs. I'll cut those leads off. And two nice LEDs about the right height. We'll go after some transistors now. Let's see. I'll start over here at the oscillator, PN2222. We'll get rid of these two guys. Uh, check the orientation. Put them in. Again, do not put those transistors all the way down on the board. One of these days you might have to replace one, you're going to regret it if it's sitting right smack on the board. Plus again, having that extra lead length helps dissipate the iron from the temperature from the soldering protecting your transistor. If you have the thing buried right down to the board, uh, you've got no, no distance at all between the iron and the actual semiconductor so it's going to uh, it's going to get hot inside that case so I'm I'm holding it about where I want it off the board spreading the leads just a little bit so those are still up about maybe you've got a quarter of an inch uh, here's a 78 L05 up in the power whoops I guess it didn't tighten that one down enough Okay, so here's this L78 L05, which is up in the power supply. I'm going to, again, I'll just fling that around here and move it to the other side because this guy wants to be right in here. About a quarter of an inch off the board. Spreading the two leads. 
Uh, here's a 4403. Let's see. That's down here. That wants to be very close spacing, and this has already been been bent out. So I'm again. I'm going to take my my uh, needle nose, and I'm going to go in and sort of go up right up to the body and sort of straighten them out. Take that take that kink out. Let's see where the camera. So I don't know if you can see that now. I'm going to get it on something black. Okay. Now I can just bend them back together. And now I've got close spacing again. Um, so I'll put that guy in. 4403 is right in here. Paying attention to the orientation on the board. A little bit tougher. I'm, I'm using my fingernails on this one. About a quarter of an inch up off the board. Spread the leads out a little bit just to keep it in place. And I got one remaining the MPF 102. Same deal. It's got wide spacing, so I'm going to. I'm going to take and bend it right at, re unkink the leads, bend them together, and get them back to close again. And then when I put it on the board, it's right in here. Now see, here's a case where i got to now feed this against this tall res uh, potentiometer, and i got to get this sucker down in there. But, I mean, it's not too bad. I can do that. It goes in there pretty good. Um, spread the leads. Okay, so I got all the transistors on board. Clean the iron with the brass shavings. Add a little bit more solder to it. Now with transistors and semiconductors, you want to operate a little bit quick. Uh, you don't want to put too much heat on them. So it doesn't take much. If you got a good little puddle on the end, it only takes a second to it. You don't have to feed much solder to it. You just need enough to make the connection. I didn't like that one. I went between the two. I'm going to turn it right around and go in here all by itself on one side. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. We'll get that guy. Now I got a little bit of, I got a little bit of excess solder on there. I want to clean it off just a little bit. Okay, we got one. Whoops, we got this guy over here. Everybody get done? One, two, three, four, five. Everybody's done. I'm not. Uh, I'm not racing. I'm just uh, building along. I'm just. I don't have any distractions. I don't have the radio going. I'm just talking to you guys, um, showing you how it's done, making sure everything feels right. Looks. Whoops. There's a couple of leads that were laying across some pads. So I'm just. Looks good. We're getting close. Okay. I'm. If you look at the at the parts here, I'm going to slide the. Uh, clipboard over and you can see I'm just down to connectors so they should go pretty quick too so I'll start with whoop, that guy got bent over a little bit so I gotta put stand that guy back up okay so uh, I guess we'll we'll go for the uh, 18 pin connector for the microprocessor for the frequency counter we'll put that in uh, that stays put. We got a 14 pin. Make a note of the orientation so that the little the little uh, notchy thing matches up with the socket. So there's the two IC sockets. Um, I guess that's what I'm going to do for now. I'll turn that over and I'll 
When I do IC sockets, clean the board again, I start on one end and go right down the line. I'm going to do the first one, double check. I'm going to flip it over, make sure that nothing moved, nothing did. So I'll do the first pin on both guys. Everything's okay. They didn't fall down or anything. And I'll just go right down the line. I got this so that it's, it's parallel with my hand, and I just I got a little puddle on the tip of the iron, and I try to get that puddle right on the pad and the pin. Add a little bit of solder once I see it's hot. Not much. Okay, same thing. I'll go right down. Since I've got nice clean solder, I can do quite a few, working quickly, I can do quite a few connections before I have to go clean the iron again. Okay, there's two, two IC sockets. I'm going to do the crystal in behind the, in behind the thing. I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave that slightly up off the board. Not very high, just, just enough. I might be able to get pliers underneath it in case I have to cut it out for any particular reason. I'm going to put my iron up for a minute. Go in there and hold it with my thumb at the right depth. I'm pushing on the pins at the same time, so there it is. You want to keep, on a crystal, you want to keep the leads short. They're short, but just enough to stand off the board a tiny bit. So, I don't know, if, let's see. So you can see it's just off the board, just a tiny bit. You can see a little bit of lead in there. So, we'll cut those leads off. Oh man, we're getting down to the wire here. We only have a few more connectors to go. Okay, we got the LCD connector, which is two eight pin female headers. And they go in. I what I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna take the a male header and I'm gonna go halfway between the two. Just so that I know I've got them nice and in parallel to each other and hit those babies. I'm getting a little bit more solder lead out because I'm going to go right down the line. Uh, I clean the tip, add a little bit of dollop and make sure I'm making sure that everything's nice and cool. And I'll go right down the line. You can see the iron's only on the way. I don't know what I've got. I don't have a temperature setting on this iron. This is a uh, Metcal, which is a a professional iron, and there's no temperature control on it. It it knows what it's supposed to be. Apparently, it's an RF iron. And um, it puts out the heat it, it needs, and I can just go chug right along without having to worry about what did I set the iron at. So there is the LCD connector. I'll pull that pin out, and I got a nice even row. I got a few headers down here I got to deal with, so um, these two eight pinners we're going to put on the LCD display to plug in there. So this one here, we, we cut apart to fit the various places we need to go. So 
<clears throat> For that, I have a magic tool that I really love. Um, I brought this out to Billathon last year and showed everybody. This is a um, pair of Stanley. Nobody makes these anymore that I can, <laughs> I can find out because they are wicked dangerous. You accidentally get your finger in that sucker and it will go off like cutting through a um, hot dog with a with a sharp knife. I, so, uh, but this is, makes great parallel cuts. See, I'm going to cut. I'm trying to get the right angle. I'm going to cut with that utility knife blade right between those two pins and I get a nice clean cut. If you did that with dykes, one side of this sucker would be unusable. So I got a two that goes here, I got a two that goes there, and I got a two there or a three there. So I got a two, two, oh, guess what? I don't have enough. Okay, I guess I better I guess I better change that in that kit. Now, it just so happens I usually keep uh, some cups of of parts laying around on my bench uh, that have miscellaneous parts in them, but I don't see the cup that has all the connectors in it. I guess I better go get one. Hang on. So here's another one. I'll cut this into three. So that's actually four wide, so I'm going to cut one off the end. And I'm being very careful where I place my fingers because I've actually, um, I haven't cut my finger, but I've actually hit it with that end of that with a brand new thing and it, it was sharp. It went in there and it bled like a stuck pig. Okay. So we got to put these guys in here. <coughs> These are kind of tough, <laughs> and I, I've been building stuff for years and years and years and years. And I got a little little technique I use, and I I'll put it in there. Now, in this case, you have to do these one at a time. And what I do is I I get my fingertip on on one guy. I'm trying to get it in focus here, and then I'll go to the other end. I'll take my iron. Oh, let me do one other thing here. I'm going to show you something else. Here's my roll of solder, and I'm going to pretend like it's a cobra. I'm going to actually wire it up there and get it tall. So this guy is up in the air. You can't see it from the, from the top, but there you go. See how it's, it's sitting up like a snake, a rattlesnake, ready to strike. So what I'll do is I'll hold that guy in with one finger tip on one end, and I'll go to the other end. I'll get a little bit of solder there, and I'll try... There it is. So I got that one end on the other end where my finger was. It now, if you look, it's kind of it's kind of bent over. It's not really the way I wanted it. So now that I've got solder on it, I can actually look at it and reseat it to where I want it. Let it cool. That looks nice and vertical now. And now I can go back and do the other two pins. One, two. When I know they are cool, uh, cool, then I can go back and hit that first one because I, you know, it was a very quick kind of a solder deal. And now there's the three pin connector all done. Two pin connector is a little bit tougher unless you got a fingernail or get that fingertip right, <laughs> right. Hang on, I gotta put that iron out. Let's see. So if I hold that with one fingertip in, you notice that that I am I'm pretty close to the other one, but I've been doing it for a long time, so I know I'll be able to get it done. So I'll put that in there, hold that one one tip. I still got Mr. Rattlesnake sitting here, and I like him to be pointed down a little bit, and I'll I'll get in here and I'll go on the other end. There it is. Now I could probably 
I'm going to look at it. Oh, it's leaning over like the Tower of Pisa, so I'm going to look at it whilst I'm heating the underside and get it so it's sitting nice and vertical and straight, and I like it. Go hit the first, the other pin. Solder that in. Nice job. When I know it's cold, I can go back and do the first one. Okay, so there's another. I got another tour. Let's see, where does this one go? This one goes here where it says 5 volts. You can actually, you can run this off of a 9 volt battery or you can bring in, bring 5 volts in from a bench supply or, or uh, one of those nice regulator wall warts or something. So, oops. Put that in the spot. Hold that baby with one fingertip and don't get on the other side. And get right in there and make sure I know which which side I want to solder to, and that's the other side. The pin that my finger ain't touching. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. That's, that's pretty. Well, let's see. No, you can't tell. It's a pretty crappy job, but again, it was just a temporary tack on this thing. So I can look at it and I want to get it so it's nice and vertical, seated right, not tilty. Put her down, saw the second side. Wait till it's cool. Touch up that first one. Okay. Um, we got we got another one here with this this thing called A. That doesn't work. I think I had the A. There's a point right here, A and ground. That's a test point for when you're trying to calibrate the signal. So looks to me like everything is in there except for the RCA connector, which fell off the side of my bench. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna look now. See, I got it nice and tippy, so I'm gonna look at it, feel it, respot that connector or respot that. I'm holding the connector and making sure it's nice and flat and level while I hit that one solder, one soldered connection until I like how the thing is sitting. Then I can hit the second one. Solder it in permanently. Then go back. Once that's cool and I know it's going to stay put, I can go back and do the, set, the first one and add a little solder to it and make it nice. And uh, I'm looking, I'm looking, oh, we got a 9 volt uh, battery connection, uh, what am I, oh, my got 9 volt battery snap, it fell on the floor, so we got a plus and a minus, I will do them one at a time, plus goes to the top connector, um, get my solder out. I'm gonna clean it. Get a nice dollop on there, and go over to that one pin. Hit it with some solder. Make sure that the connection is all good. Hold it, and then I'll do this. Do the negative lead. Get some solder. Hope you don't mind the running commentary, but I'm kind of talking to myself as I build this thing. Helps keep me awake. It's just me and the dog up here at the shop today, tonight, which is typical. Okay, I'll clean those up. And that board's pretty well built. I'll take the HC-132. And I know from experience I gotta parallel the uh make sure the pins are kinda square. 
so I can get that in there. That's down. This microprocessor has been programmed. And I'll make sure that's nice and square. Put that in. Um, boy, that's everything. All we got to do now is get the LCD display. So here's the display. It's going to it's going to go on like that. So we're going to take these guys and and I think I did this once before, and I just basically put them in here like. I gotta take that one off because it's gonna it's gonna affect the display. And I'll put this one over here. And now, when I put these two guys down in the connector, I can actually put this display right down on it. Let's see what I got a little interference from a couple of transistors down there, but not bad. So. Uh, the transistors are a little high. Forgot about that, but it's, we're still good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it down with one finger, and I'm gonna go to the other end and do that one, and then go right down the line. Keeping the soldering iron away from that that uh, LCD. Okay, so this thing is now clean up. Make sure I clean off my my. Uh, I'll take these guys out. I got two things left, which are these two jumpers, and one of them is the switch the on switch and I'm just gonna take a look see where what I've got a jumper can't remember cuz I uh, I think when the switch is going it says on going that way so these the back to and I will jump her in this jumper right here enables the oscillator to go into the counter if I took that out and set it like this the crystal oscillator circuit is not coming in the connector so I can put an input in inject the signal from someplace else and measure that so I'm gonna measure that guy now this hopefully if I've done my homework <laughs> uh, let me just make sure I got a good battery before I do the, the grand reveal I got way too many 9 volt batteries sitting around on my bench that aren't any good there's one of them That's 1.3 volts there's a 9.4 so here's a 9 volt battery I'll plug that baby in look at that the LCD comes on I'll do the contrast and I don't know yeah you can read that cool only it's upside down so I'm gonna turn it around this way yeah and I'm going to take an FT243 crystal. Let's see, I happen to have one sitting right here. That. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to go over here and touch these two. 712390. 7125. Okay, let's see. Here's another one. Hidden from view. I'm going to touch these two guys right there. It says, whoops, 684921. 
6850. Now I haven't calibrated this. You notice that the green light goes on when you got it when you're testing a crystal and it sees that it's active. The active light comes on, and the frequency kind of measures it. What you can do to calibrate this thing, you've got a little, you've got the the. Um, let's see if I can point out. You've got the trim capacitor right there, and you've got a four megahertz crystal that we had in in there. That's driving the the microprocessor that's doing all the counting. What you want to do is you want to take a known good crystal, measure it on something that's really good, uh, and then bring it over. Now I have over on the other end of my bench, I have a $3,500 HP frequency counter. Um, I, when I calibrate it, what I do is I go over to that guy, take a known crystal, measure this same measure in this circuit I measure it with my HP when I find out what it is then I tweak the capacitor so this thing reads the same but for most purposes this is pretty pretty close and what you can do is you can always measure a crystal with this circuit now and then figure the percentages when you want to move it but there it is that's uh, that's the build of the uh, Billathon crystal oscillator and frequency counter uh, I'm going to post this baby and you, hopefully you can get a little bit of a view of it before uh, Billathon comes on. So, okay, I guess I got to pause this thing somehow, which I don't know.